In this video we'll look at how heat and temperature are related and it's via a property that all materials have called heat capacity. Roughly heat capacity is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a substance. It might seem like that should be the same for everything but it's not. Say you take one kilogram of water and one kilogram of concrete both at 25 degrees C and say you want to raise the temperature of both of them by some defined amount. It would take almost five times as much energy to do that to the water as it would to the concrete. We call this heat absorbing property heat capacity. For something that has a low heat capacity, gaining just a little heat will raise its temperature significantly. Whereas something with a high heat capacity like water can absorb a lot of heat energy before its temperature rises very much. For instance, here's a little simulation. It shows a sample of earth and a sample of water with the same mass both absorbing the same amount of energy from heat lamps. Notice that the temperature of the water rises more slowly. This is because it has a higher heat capacity and so it takes a lot more heat energy to make its temperature rise. Note too, it's the same for cooling. When the lamps turn off, both samples begin to lose heat to the surroundings. The earth, with a low heat capacity, drops its temperature much faster because a small loss of energy makes a big difference to it whereas water with a high heat capacity takes a long time to cool down because it has to lose a lot of energy to do so. But to be able to make a fair comparison between the heat capacities of different substances, we need to get a bit picky about exactly how we measure heat capacity. For instance, we know that water has a higher heat capacity than concrete, but if you compared a cup of water with a concrete bridge pylon, then the concrete would absorb more heat energy to get to the same temperature just because there's so much more of it to hold the heat. So to get over this issue, heat capacity is defined precisely as the amount of energy that's needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So we're standardizing both the mass and the temperature change that's required. Now, does that mean that to compare heat capacities we always need to have exactly one gram of whatever substance we're interested in and to raise its temperature by exactly one degree C and see how much energy that takes? Well, thankfully not, thanks to the magic of maths. Say you take 58 grams of water and you raise its temperature by 17 degrees Celsius and you measure that it takes 4140 joules to do that. A joule is the unit that we use to measure energy. Well then, you used 4140 joules, that's the amount of heat that went in, but you had 58 grams of water instead of 1 gram of water. So we just divide the 4140 joules by 58 to find out how much heat was used for each gram of water. That gives us 71 joules per gram. Okay, but then the temperature rose by 17 degrees Celsius instead of 1 degree Celsius. So we need to divide that value again by 17 to find out how much energy was used for each degree that the temperature rose. And that gives us 4.2 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And that's the heat capacity of water. And that actually gives us the equation for heat capacity. You take the amount of energy and you divide it by the mass of the substance and the change in temperature. We can also rearrange that equation so that if you already know the substance's heat capacity, you could use its mass and temperature change to work out how much energy must have been used. And it's playing with this equation like this that we're now going to practice. Okay, so let's try solving some problems using our equation. Heat capacity equals energy over mass times the temperature change. So let's take this first problem. We're going to calculate the heat capacity of water given that it takes 37,674 joules to raise the temperature of 0.250 kilograms of water by 36 degrees Celsius. So the first thing to do in any problem like this is to write down what you know. So we know the energy, that's Q. Uh, we also know the mass of the water. That's given to us in kilograms. Now it's perfectly possible to calculate heat capacity in terms of kilograms rather than grams, as long as you show that in the units of the value of the heat capacity. But most of the values that we'll be dealing with uh, have it in grams, so I'm going to change this to grams. So 0.250 kilograms becomes 250 
grams. I'm putting a dot after the 250 to indicate that that's three significant figures, not two. All right, we also know that the change in temperature is 36 degrees Celsius. Note that a change in temperature, it doesn't matter whether it's degrees Celsius or degrees Kelvin. The size of a degree Celsius is the same as the size of a degree Kelvin. So when you take the difference between two values, uh, the two units end up being exactly the same. All right, so now it's simply a matter of plugging it into the equation. We've got that the heat capacity equals the energy over the mass times the change in temperature. And if you plug that into your calculator, you will get 4.186 and the units, uh, our energy was joules, our mass was grams and our temperature is degrees Celsius. So our units will be joules per gram per degree Celsius. Now, there's something wrong with this. Can you spot what it is? It's significant figures. If we go back to our original values, 37,674 joules has five significant figures. Our mass has three significant figures, but our temperature has only two. And that means that our final value must have two as well. So we're gonna round that to 4.2. Okay, let's do the second one. Uh, we've got the lead, we're given the heat capacity of the lead. So obviously we're not gonna be calculating heat capacity, we're gonna be calculating something else. And then we're asked how much energy, that's Q, how much energy in joules is needed to raise the temperature of 62 grams of lead from 20 to 65 degrees Celsius, uh, which is where it's just too hot to touch. So let's da write down what we know. We have the heat capacity of lead, Now that's another way of writing the units. It means exactly the same thing. Joules per gram per Kelvin. That second way of writing it there is probably more correct. We also know the mass of the lead, 62 grams. And we can work out the temperature change. We've got delta T, our final temperature is 65.0. Our initial temperature was 20.0. So our change in temperature is 45.0 degrees Celsius. Don't lose that 0 0.0. That's a significant figure. Okay, now we're calculating energy. That's Q. So we're going to rearrange the equation. I'm going to show you how it ends up being rearranged, but I'd like you to make sure that you can rearrange it for yourself. Uh, so once you've rearranged it, you should end up with Q equals CP times the mass times delta T. And if we plug that in, we get 0 0.13 times 62 times 45.0. Uh, and if you put that into your calculator, you should end up with 362.7 joules. We check our sig figs again. We find that our lowest number of sig figs is both the heat capacity and the mass at two, and so our final answer rounds off to 360 joules. Final one. If you haven't been doing this already, stop the video now and try and solve this one for yourself before you watch the answer. This is in lieu of a task at the end of the video. Um, when you've done it, come back, watch the uh, solution and see how you went. Okay, so once again, we're gonna write down what we know. We're given the heat capacity of olive oil. One point nine seven joules per gram Kelvin. Um, we're told that a hot plate is used to put a certain amount of joules, that means energy. So that's gonna be our Q. 2.56 times 10 to the third joules. Remember that joules is just the unit, it's not the name of the thing. The name of the thing we're talking about here is energy and it is measured in joules. So a hot plate is used to put uh, 2.56 times 10 to the 3 joules of energy 
into 30 grams of olive oil. So we've got that mass as well, 30.0 grams. Uh, we're told that the initial temperature, we'll call that Ti, is 25 degrees Celsius, and we want to know what is its final temperature. So to work out the final temperature, we're going to need to know the change in temperature. So that's what we're figuring out. So we're going to need to rearrange that equation again. Uh, once more, try it for yourself, or make sure you have tried it for yourself. You should end up with uh, delta T equals Q over N times the heat capacity. Uh, when we plug that in, Q is 2.56 times 10 to the 3. Our mass is exactly 30 grams. And our heat capacity is 1.97. Uh, when you evaluate that, you will get uh, 43.3 degrees Celsius to three significant figures. So we now know our change in temperature. Our initial temperature was 25. So our final temperature is going to be the initial temperature plus a change in temperature. 25 plus 43.3 which will be 68 degrees Celsius. Uh, recall your significant figure rules for when you're adding. But when you're adding or subtracting, the thing that you're looking for is the number with the lowest number of decimal places. And that's what tells you how to write your answer. OK, in the next video, I'll go through a couple of slightly more complicated examples using the heat capacity equation. But this shows you how to use it uh, for the most basic kind of calculations.